Welcome back, boys and girls. My name is Latina Gayton. I'm from Roy Neal Shelley Elementary School. I teach third grade math. Today I'll be doing a part two of my area lesson. Let's jump right back in. So we have let's talk about area part two. So before we go over, we're going to do a little review of what we learned the last time, okay? All right, guys, let's review. Before, we learned how to find the area of plane figures. We learned that area is the amount of space inside a shape. Remember, I told you that when we're talking about area, we're talking about how much space an object takes up. We don't want to say how big something is because remember, big can mean anything. Big can mean height. Big can mean weight. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the space inside of the shape, okay? Not the space on the outside because that's called what? Correct, it's called perimeter, guys. We're not trying to find perimeter. We're trying to find the area, all right? So we also learned that a plane figure is a flat, closed figure, you guys. Can you remember any examples of plane figures? That's correct. Triangles, squares, rectangles are all plane figures. So we can find the area of all 2D shapes, guys. Now, the first way we learned to find area was the basic way was to count the squares. Remember my example in the beginning, guys? I talked about the floor in my classroom. So when you look down at the floor, you see square tiles. So the easiest way that we could find area is to actually count the squares. Now, remember I told you it's very easy to mess up counting when you're just pointing and counting. So you want a sure way to make sure that you're counting all the numbers, you're not skipping any numbers, or you're not um, repeating numbers. So the best way to do that is to actually number your squares as you count. Let's do that here so that we can find the area of this rectangle, okay? So I'm going to start with the very first square, and I'm just going to number across, okay? Let's go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, here's another important thing that I want you to remember. What did I say that we measure area in? That's correct. We measure area in square units. So if I was to ask you, what is the area of this rectangle? You're not going to just tell me 12. You will say 12 square units. And remember, when we're talking about units, we're talking about units of measurement, whether it's inches, centimeters, yards, whatever you can use to measure distance, okay? Let's go on. Now, if you look at this rectangle over here, you'll notice there are no square units in the inside of it, guys. Does that mean that we can't find the area? Does anybody remember why, how, how or why we have these side lengths? That's correct. We can actually multiply the side lengths to find the area of this rectangle, boys and girls. Now, the only thing I want you to remember is that when you're multiplying, you do want to include your unit. You don't have to spell it out. You can abbreviate each word, but you want to include the unit so that when you state your answer, you won't forget what um, squares you're in. So let's try it here. So I'm going to take my long side. I'm going to say eight yards times three yards equals That's correct, 24. What kind of yards, guys? That's correct, square, SQ. That's how you abbreviate square yards. Now, boys and girls, there is a way that you can check your answer with this also. We can, if we wanna make sure that our answer is correct, we can actually go in and we can draw the squares based on their side lengths. So I always tell my students to treat this like you would a tape diagram, okay? 
So when you're making a tape diagram, you always want one less line than what you have, okay? So I have eight yards. So what I want to do is I want to have seven lines to make eight spaces, okay? So let's draw seven lines going down to make eight uh, spaces. So here we go. I'm going to do the best I can to estimate to partition, which means I'm going to try my best to make all of the spaces the same size. It may not work out, but we will get the gist of what we're supposed to be doing, okay? So let's try it. So I got one. That's not a straight line. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six and seven, so that didn't work out too good because that one is too big, but we still have eight spaces so we can still count the squares. Now over here, I have three yards, so I wanna have, I need two lines to make three spaces, so we're gonna make horizontal lines going across, okay? So let's make two horizontal lines. One and two. Now, this is the reason why we want a quick and efficient way to find area because as you can see, this is a lot of squares to count. So when it's easier, we want to use multiplication. But if you, if you want to check your answer, you want to be sure you can always do this method. So let's number our squares. Let's get ready because we have a lot of them, okay? Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We're counting by eights. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now, boys and girls, the important thing to remember is that the number of squares should match your answer that you have up here for multiplication. If you have a different number of squares that you do up here, then you've done something wrong and you need to start back over. You either made a mistake in your calculations or you numbered your squares incorrectly. But you need to make sure that what you have down here matches what you have up there, okay? All right, let's move on. Another thing we talked about was finding the missing side length when we have the area and we have one side, okay? So what we have here is we have a rectangle with an area of 12 square feet and we have one known side, which is four feet. Now, we know that in order to find area, we have to multiply. So we have to think about what undoes multiplication, you guys? What's the inverse operation of multiplication? It would be division, correct? So what we want to do is we want to, instead of multiplying, we want to divide our area to find the missing side length. Let's try that here. So remember, when we're dividing, we always start with our total first, which is 12 square feet. So 12 square feet, and this is how you write square feet, divided by our known side. What's our known side, boys and girls? It's four feet. Divided by four feet equals now, in my class, my kids are a little bit better at multiplication than they are division. So I actually encourage them to skip count to find this answer. So what I tell them to do is skip count by your known side until you get to your area, okay? So let's count by fours until we get to 12. Let's try it. Now, we need to track how many fours we count. So I always tell my kids to do that with their fingers. So let's try it. Four, eight, 12. How many fingers am I holding up? Three. Okay, so we know that 12 feet, divide, 12 square feet divided by four feet equals three feet. So our unknown side here is three feet, okay? Let's move on. Now, 
Now, today's objective is to actually solve word problems involving area, you guys. So this is where we get into the application of how area applies to our everyday lives, okay? So let's start with this first one. So we want to apply using RDW. We always want to use this strategy, read, draw, and write to help us solve our word problems. Let's look and see what we have going on here. Cliff draws a rectangle with a, with a side length of 6 inches and an area of 24 square inches. What is, the other, what is the other side length? How do you know? So, boys and girls, let's circle our numbers. We have 6 inches and we have 24 square inches, okay? Now, when I look at those two numbers, boys and girls, what I notice is I have a total and I have a factor. So that kind of tells me right now that I'm looking for the missing factor, which means I'm looking for an unknown side. So we've drawn, we've uh, read it, so let's draw it, okay? So let's draw what this rectangle that Cliff did, let's draw what it would look like. So he drew a rectangle, I don't like my side. So he drew a rectangle. Okay. And he said that the side length is six inches. And the area is what, guys? That's correct, 24 square inches. So where would I put that? I don't want to put it on my sides because then I'm saying that the side lengths are 24 square inches. Remember, I told you the area is the space inside the shape. So the appropriate place for 24 square inches would be inside of this rectangle. So I'm going to write 24 square inches, okay? Now... Remember what we talked about. We said that in order to find area, we multiply. So we have to think in terms, what undoes multiplication? The inverse operation, which is division. Division undoes multiplication, okay? Or undoes multiplication. So what we have to do is we have to actually take our total, which is our area, and divide it by our known side. And our known side is... Six inches. So let's divide here, guys. 24 square inches divided by what's our known side, guys? That's correct. Six inches. Okay. So we have 24 square inches divided by six inches equals four inches, you guys. So let's go back to our problem. It, it actually asks us two questions. It says, what is the other side length? So we found that, you guys, we know that the other side length is four inches. Now it asks us, how do you know? Well, how did you find, how did you find the missing side length? So in this step, what we want to do is we want to explain how we got an act, how we got our act answer. So we would say something like, I know that the missing side length is four inches because 24 square inches divided by six inches equals four inches. And that gives me my missing side. Okay. So that would be a good explanation of how you know your answer. All right. Let's go to our second and last problem for today. Okay. Hang in there with me. I know word problems can kind of be challenging, but if you to always encourage my students to just take them step by step. Don't get too overwhelmed. Take it sentence by sentence. See what you have and just work it out, okay? So let's see what we have here. Now, this is my favorite kind of word, word problem. It's a two-step, which means we have to find an unknown before we actually get our answer. So let's jump into this two-step word problem, okay? Eliza's bedroom measures six feet by seven feet. Her brother's bedroom measures five feet by eight feet. Eliza says that their rooms have the same 
exact floor area issue, right? Why or why not? So what we're doing here is we're comparing the size of Eliza's room to her brother's room, all right? So Eliza's room measures six feet by seven feet. And then we have her brother's room that measures five feet by eight feet, okay? So we need to find out the area of both rooms so that we can find out if, their area, if the areas of their room are the same or different, okay? So let's start with Eliza. So we're gonna assume that their rooms are a square. And this is Eliza's room. So I'm doing my drawing part, okay? So Eliza's room is seven feet by six feet. And then we have her brother's room that we're gonna also assume is a rectangle. So I'm just gonna put brother. And let's go back to our problem. His room is eight feet by five feet. Now, boys and girls, what we wanna do is we wanna multiply in order to find our areas. So let's start with Eliza's room. Seven feet times six feet will equal what, guys? That's correct. 42 square feet. And let's go over to her brother's room, okay? So now, we see that her brother's room is eight feet and five feet. So let's multiply our side lengths in order to find the area, okay? So eight feet times five feet equals what? That's correct, 40 square feet. Now let's go back to our problem, you guys. Eliza says that their rooms have the exact same floor area. Is she right? Why or why not? Well, let's look at what we have. Eliza's floor area is 42 square feet and her brother's uh, room is 40 square feet. Are those the same numbers? No, they're not. So we know that 42 does not equal 40. So Eliza is incorrect. So remember, we do read, draw, and write. And when we write our sentence, we will say that Eliza is incorrect because her floor area is 42 square feet and her brother's floor area is 40 square feet, okay? That's all I have for you today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed my area lesson part two, and I'll come back and we will have another lesson on polygons. Bye.